It feels strange to maintain this kind of distance, doesn't it? It may feel strange, but it certainly isn't the first time this sort of thing has ever happened. I say that because I came across a letter Martin Luther wrote to Dr. John Hess, dated almost 500 years ago. In that old letter, he wrote about dealing with a deadly plague sweeping its way through where they lived. Composing that letter in a time of quarantine, Luther wrote this about his life and ministry to others. I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. Then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus inflict and pollute others and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he will surely find me and I have done what he has expected of me. And so I'm not responsible for either my own death or the death of others. Now, if my neighbor needs me, I shall not avoid place or person, but will go freely as stated above. Such a God-fearing faith is there because it is neither brash nor foolhardy and does not tempt God. Luther's thoughts are worth considering during these unusual days in our lives. Admittedly, staying separated from one another isn't easy. We're not made to live isolated lives. We not only like being together, we need each other. Being separated is a sacrifice, but it's worth it because of the social benefit. As one of my mentors used to say, certain things must be that other things might be. While I was reading through the letter of Philippians recently, I came across some statements that are familiar to many of us. They're in chapter 4, verses 11 to 13. They seem tailor-made for today. Paul writes, I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. I've learned the secret of living in every situation. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. I find three timeless lessons in those words. One, contentment is something we must learn. It doesn't come naturally. It wasn't a part of our DNA birth packet. We must learn it. Two, contentment can be ours in whatever we're going through at any time. And three, this kind of contentment is directly linked to our relationship with Jesus Christ. As these days of temporary isolation continue, I hope you're discovering what it means to trust and rest and find contentment.